Hello friends, so this is the second question related to uh, finding out the Norton equivalent circuit uh, with dependent sources. So here we have in this circuit, we have to find the Norton equivalent uh, across the terminals A and B. So here, this is the dependent source, it is a voltage dependent voltage source and this is the important variable here the voltage across this 2 ohm resistor so first step we have to find the Norton current so we have to short circuit terminals A and B and find the current flowing through the shorted path so let us redraw the circuit okay okay this 6 ohm 10 ampere to Vx to and this is the shorted path okay now the important thing to notice here is that as these two terminals get shorted together here the voltage is zero volt and in parallel the same voltage always appears in parallel so here also the voltage will be zero volt so we can say that the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor or this point is 0 volt so Vx is also equal to 0 volt and all this because the terminals A and B get shorted together and because of this shorted path the voltage is 0 so Vx is equal to 0 volt the same 0 volt will appear across this now as Vx is equal to 0 volt 2 Vx is also equal to 0 volt 2 Vx is also equal to 0 volt which means this will also get short circuited this 2 Vx dependent voltage source will get short circuited ok this so the modified circuit it will look something like this ok this is 6 ohm this is 10 ampere this is short circuited and this is A and B I N this goes out of the equation because in parallel the equivalent resistance across the shorted path because of the shorted path it becomes 0 ok so this this 2 ohm resistor it goes out now we have to determine I n now here this is 10 ampere this is 6 ohm and you always know that current always takes the minimum resistance path ok current always takes the minimum resistance path so this whole 10 ampere it will flow through this shorted path and the current flow through this 6 ohm it will be 0 so i n is equal to 10 ampere ok you get the point because of this shorted path the current will take this minimum resistance path the 0 resistance path and no current will flow through this 6 ohm resistance path so entire 10 ampere current from this current source the independent current source will flow through this shorted path ok so i n is equal to 10 ampere so we have determined the Norton current i n is equal to 10 ampere now we have to determine r n so we have already determined the Norton current which came 10 ampere now we have to determine the Norton resistance Norton equivalent resistance so for that 
we have to first deactivate all the independent sources so here we have a 10 ampere uh, independent current source so that will be open circuited okay the independent sources will be deactivated so this independent current source will be open circuited then we have to connect an external excitation across the terminals a and b to find the norton resistance okay so let us do that so six ohm this is open circuited 10 ampere is removed we have this dependent source the dependent sources will stay as they are this is vx to ohm now here we have to connect an external excitation let us connect a one volt voltage source okay and let the current flowing from it is i zero so rn will be basically one volt by i zero so we have to determine i zero okay so now the important thing to notice here is this vx is very important because it is the dependent variable so here because this one volt external excitation voltage is connected the voltage here will also be one volt basically vx is equal to one volt this dependent voltage voltage dependent voltage source to vx is equal to two volt okay now this one volt appears across this two ohm resistor okay this two ohm resistor here so the current flowing through this two ohm resistor will be one by two or 0 0.5 ampere current flowing through this two ohm resistor okay now here it is i zero flowing from 1 volt 0 0.5 ampere goes downwards from this node so here it is i0 minus 0 0.5 ampere okay this so if we apply kvl in this closed loop with the polarity assigned because current always flows from positive to negative in this way so if we apply kvl it will be so here it is minus to plus it is 6 into i0 0.5 minus 2 vx which is basically 2 volt minus 2 minus vx which is equal to minus 1 is equal to 0 that implies 6 i 0 minus 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 that implies 6 i 0 minus 6 is equal to 0 that implies 6 i 0 is equal to 6 that implies i 0 is equal to 1 ampere i 0 is equal to 1 ampere this is very important then we will put this i 0 is equal to 1 ampere value here so it is 1 volt by 1 ampere which is equal to 1 ohm ok so r n is equal to 1 ohm ok so here we have calculated the Norton equivalent resistance so uh, please watch all the videos related to the dependent sources circuits how we you know handled circuits involving dependent sources in case of superposition theorem in case of Thevenin's theorem and now we are dealing with the Norton equivalent circuit the equivalent resistance calculation for Thevenin and Norton they are the same they have the same procedure okay 
it is just the Norton current and the Thevenin voltage that determination is a little bit different basic circuit analysis techniques are used but the equivalent resistance that procedure is the same they are the same thing okay Rn and Rth they are the same it is just the equivalent resistance it is just that when we are uh, finding out the Norton equivalent circuit we use the term Norton resistance when we are dealing with Thevenin we call it Thevenin resistance but they are essentially the same the equivalent resistance okay the equivalent resistance when the independent sources are deactivated like the current source is open circuited voltage source is short circuited and the dependent sources are kept as it is so in that position we have to determine the equivalent resistance which is called as Rn or Rth so here the Norton current is 10 ampere the Norton resistance is 1 ohm okay